Hi everybody, I am here at the International Association of Dance Medicine and Science Convention. This conference brings health awareness to the dance industry. You guys know I'm all about that. So we're going to go around and talk to some people and I also have an interview that I did with principal ballerina Susan Jaffe. So stay tuned for that. So we are here in the vendors area and a lot of these vendors will bring new products to this convention to show off and to sort of promote to the dance world. So I want to show you some of them because a lot of them are really cool. So let's go check them out. Oh, we're on. Yes, we're on. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Please tell me about these ballet shoes. They look incredible. Hi, I'm Joseph. I'm the business development manager for MDM Dancewear. This is um, MDM. It's an Australian-based company. It's been around for about six years. Um, it was started by Timothy Heathcote and Simone Goldsmith. They're both um, former principal dancers in Australia. Tim basically got to a point where he was sort of asking himself, knowing what we know about materials and injury prevention and technique training and physiology, looking at what athletics wear did 40 years ago back in the 70s with impact protection, arch support, stuff for pronation and supination, can we adapt that technology into a ballet shoe? And that's when he came up with the concept of the dance-based support, which mm. underpins all of the MDM, all of the MDM um, range. And that's the dance-based support in there. And it's primarily designed to help with pronation. Um, that's important. This one's specifically designed for young, well, students that are new to dance. Right. And when they pronate, I don't know if you can see my feet, but when they pronate <laughs> and they roll forward, it's it sends a subtle cue. It's a very subtle cue, but it sends a subtle cue that you, it feels slightly odd. It feels like you're slightly falling out of the shoe. And so when you align your knee, when you activate the intrinsic muscles in your foot and align your knee with your foot, then the shoe feels really comfortable, and that's what it's designed to do. So it's just a little kinesthetic, proprioceptive device to help them feel better feel their own feet. Um, it's made of an EVA, so it mm. provides some shock absorption, impact protection. Because he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to pull up the heel because the heel is already pulled up by the dance base support. He can get rid of the drawstring, so the drawstring just feels snug around. So That's it's taking, nice. Taking pressure off the heel and off the off the bursa, which can inflame and inflame the Achilles tendon. So it provides all the resistance that you want through tendu to build the metatarsal, but right. provides all the aesthetics because it's actually it's actually designed to sit slightly up like that again to help activate the intrinsic muscles. So so when you point. It sucks up into the arch, rather. That's than nice. Instead of just a so, bit extra fabric. Yeah, yeah. And that sort of th this sort of idea and this technology sort of underpins all. So it's no longer a, a one size fits all. So this is a, 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 a shoe that's been made for younger, you know, younger students that are starting. And then you move to the reflex, and the reflex version just has a reflex panel in it. Oh, so that if that's you're in amazing. your shoes for a long period of time, but and you fit them beautifully in point, but you're working in flat and demi. It means the shoe is no longer putting so much pressure on the front of your toes that it's just expanding and contracting with you as you move. And that's what that one's designed to do. And then he's specifically designed performance shoes um, with the same technology, but they're just, they, they've got a, an even better fit, if you like, because, right. of, because of the quality of the leather and the quality, quality of the material. This is a stretch canvas, so... That's nice, and I love the support because one of my biggest issues with ballet shoes is there's no support. No support. And you're just like basically being barefoot. Well, what they are is a beautiful and or comfortable foot covering. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what the problem is, that they've always the choices have always been between beauty and comfort. Right. And now Tim has added functionality. And right. So when you're looking at your shoe, you can think, okay, what do I need it for? What stage of development am I at? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Am I doing class and rehearsals mostly? Well, I want functionality and comfort. As I move towards performance now I can think more about aesthetics right. and functionality and, come, and just it's just an, something else to add into the mix which is really cool well that's amazing I will link all their info below thank you so much for showing us that you guys know Harlequin Floors I talk about them all the time they are here with all of their options so I wanted to show you uh, what they have. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm from the uh, the UK office. I attend nearly every um, Adams uh, conference. And then what I do is, depending on where we are in the world, when our local colleagues come along. Today I'm here with Chrissy, who's uh, director of marketing for the American Hardware Corporation. Are these all different options of your floorings? Because I I tell my followers a lot about Harlequin, not just for 
commercial use, but for their own. Uh, it's a it's a big thing of doing home studios in their in their homes. And I actually have some of your floor in my little home studio that I've oh, had since cool. I was like 11. So that's awesome. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. what we try to do where possible is we try and recommend that people have a proper dance specific sprung floor. Right. Because whatever performance surface you have on top, having a proper sprung floor. That gives you between 60 and 70 percent force reduction, which over time, if you can imagine, the amount of times that you jump, the amount of times you land, having that level of force reduction is going to minimise injuries such as stress fractures or shin splints. Then, when it comes to the different types of top surfaces, um, I suppose top surfaces 101 would right. be whether or not um, the performance surface has a foam background. Mm. If it has a foam underneath, then you'll find that you sink into it ever so slightly. It gives you a bit of cushioning. Uh, when people are doing point work, they sometimes find that that gives them that extra feeling of security. Also, people that do contemporary dance, they do a lot of rigorous floor work. So having a cushioned surface means it's nicer on elbows and knees. Right, right. The time that then the foam isn't so useful is when you're doing any type of percussive dance, such as tap or flamenco or Irish mm. dance. Then the foam actually helps deaden the sound. So if you want to use it for percussive dance, then choose one without foam. And this goes underneath, obviously. Yes. Underneath. Yeah. These are sprung floor panels. What they do is they all lock together with a key. I've unlocked it now, and then they come apart like that. Brilliant. So you can have these panels, put them together, lock them together, then roll out the performance surface of choice, as I said earlier, depending on whether you want one with a cushion background or not. And then they lock back together again. That's with the key. That's great, because so many people just put it down on top of cement or on top of wood, and it's, it's not, that's not the safest option. That's so. one of the things that we try and um, give to people as a take-home point. Rolling a vinyl floor over concrete, whilst it's better than nothing, right. and if it's got a foam background, it will give you some cushioning, it doesn't give you fo false reduction. Right. And that's the thing that you really want, especially if you're doing a lot of jumps. You have a turn that's a nice little option. Turning book? <laughs> Oh. If you are doing just some home practice, either for tap or for um, practicing your pirouettes, mm -hmm. we do do a turning board. It's got a handle, it can go under your bed, and it has two sides. One, a wood. Oh, uh, wow. A final surface. That, that's amazing. Yeah. The advantage of something like this is that a vinyl floor, you can't roll out onto um, carpet, for example. So right. if you want something just for home use, something like this you can practice your pirouettes or flip it over and uh, practice tap, tap. Or some Irish as well guys I highly recommend you look into this <laughs> I will link it below for you that's great because not a lot of people can do a whole room no. but they can do that much but that can slip under a bed right at night. right brilliant so we are at the Gaynor Minden table. You guys know the Gaynor Minden, but I want to show you. This is Jess, my dear friend Jess. Hello there. And I want to show you their the inside. This is fascinating to me. Their new point shoes. It's just tell tell me. Yeah. Let us know. So um, it's really exciting because um, something unique about Gaynor Minden is we dial in the fit by addressing all these different elements of the shoe. So there's three different models we work with, which is the back of the foot. There's four different boxes, which we look at the front of the foot. And then adding into all of that, we choose the most appropriate shank strength for the dancer. Mm -hmm. Very, very important because our shank is actually also our box strength. So in order to get a really um, supple and articulate roll through, we want to make sure the dancer's shoe strength is paired well for them. So we have five different strengths here. Everything's color coordinated. To also be beautiful. So our lightest shank right here being pianissimo, our purple bag, equivalent to a softer shank. Our feather being a medium soft in the blue, supple in the pink, extra flex in the yellow, and our hardest shank here in the green. And you fit me yesterday, which I will show you when I get my shoes, which thank you very much. I went with the yellow uh, to still feel like I could get over yet. It was really supportive. Um, and they're very, very comfortable. 
are. And they're, you know, they're three-quartered, so they're going to break beautifully right at the highest point of the arch. Um, so making sure that that strength is really appropriate for the dancer is, mm -hmm. is super important. So we have introduced this year and are very excited to be the first company making um, core colored shoes. So right now there are the cappuccino and the espresso, along with of course our white, black, and red. Uh, we will be adding in a mocha this year as well. So we'll wow. color a little bit between these two. Um, and they do have matching ribbon and elastic for dancers needing it. Wow. That's, that's really great because so there's so many different skin tones and if you want a nude shoe, it doesn't always mean this for people. It's that and they don't have to dye them now. We had a, a wonderful experience with a teacher we were working with, an RAD teacher, and she um, grew up in the UK and she actually said to us the very first time that I felt different than my peers in a ballet class was when my teacher had me sit down and pancake my first oh. pair of shoes. Up until that point, I felt very included in the class environment, and then at that point, it was just this... Yeah, disconnect. Disconnect, just, yeah. where um, I, she said, I just knew I was, I was different. Mm. So um, we we're very passionate about this. Um, I'm very excited to be the first company offering that, and it's no additional charge. So, That's brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much. Thanks, Fabulous. So this is the amazing, amazing, is it Paula or Paul? Paula. Paula. we're all female owned. So we love it. I love it. A Paula <laughs> table. Um, and they have brilliant socks that are supportive instead of just a normal sock. So please tell us about your amazing product. Uh, we've created footwear for dancers that has arch support, ankle stability, and energy absorption. And each style fits the different dancers' picky aesthetics and needs and preferences. Um, we have the Alpha, which is our level one support that replaces your half sole shoe. Um, and it has a nice snug fit in the toe. It has arch support. We have energy absorption pads in the ball of the foot. And this strap lays nice and comfortable underneath that ankle bone where three ligaments insert that are most vulnerable to rolls and sprains. Um, our level two support is the performance where you're getting the added energy absorption in the heel, more arch support because of more coverage and ankle stability. Um, but we stop it right underneath that mid calf and it's also a nice soft opening, lays comfortably on the skin and looks gorgeous lying on stage. And then this is our workhorse, our level three maximum support. Um, same foot. Um, energy absorption and ankle, um, but this one you have a freedom fit in the toe, where this one has your freedom fit with a little bit of a slim cut. You show off your feet better than any dance shoe as well, and you get the graduated compression of the leg, which assists in removing more inflammation and aiding in circulation. And what's really exciting is our traction. We've mm -hmm. removed all the bulk and seams underneath the foot. Um, so you have a traction that is an adhesive that um, starts out sticky on purpose. Then the dancer gets to choose where they want to keep their traction. And you break it in, wear it down, and then you can start to refresh the traction um, to keep it at the level that you want. Um, the favorite refresher, some people just use rosin, but actually E6000, our loved That's E6000. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's their non-toxic spray adhesive. It's a pump spray. Wow. Wow. You spray five to ten pumps on the traction base, and it keeps re-sticking the grip for the life of the shock. Wow. So that gives dancers a lot of freedom um, in the style, choreography, you know, floor. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of these come with the grip or without. We also have it in different colors to, um, again, create the lines that dancers want. We have three different shades from nude one, nude two, and a black. This one's coming in a nude three soon, a beautiful brown mocha. Um, and then just for a fun pop of color, the infinite also comes in our signature mm. color teal. I mean, these are great for flying if you need compression socks or doing bar and socks. You guys know I've talked to you about that. So you can really use your feet, yet you can add the traction so it actually feels like you can balance and not slip around. Yep. So. It's able to replace your dance shoes, um, or you can just have support in your shoes if you're a tapper, hip hopper, traveling. Any barefoot athlete is going to appreciate the traction, but really any athlete is going to love the non-traction in their shoes for long days. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I will link all their information below, as always. Thank so you. Thank you. So one of the other things I had the privilege of doing here was speaking with Susan Jaffe, who is a principal with ABT. Uh, the two of us chatted and did an interview about health and wellness for dancers. So I want to show you that right now. At the New York City Ballet, because I was thrown into things so young, I had to deal with a lot of the mental issues that are not talked about in terms of ballet how to push yourself, how to get past the image in the mirror, how to deal with 
casting when somebody gets something that you don't, how to deal with casting when you get something that they don't. Um, so for me, it was a big mental game, and that's what I try to pass on to my students now, is that it's not just about the technique. It's not just about how you look, but it's also the mental game of ballet. And one of the tricks I use with them is that if they're in class and I see them in their heads, like no, nothing's working, pirouettes aren't working, I'll literally stop class and we'll chat for five minutes. How's your day going? How's school? You know, and then it gets them out of their head and they start dancing again and it's better. So for me, it's passing on to them to, to, and teaching them how to be aware of the mental game of ballet. Um, because I certainly struggle with it. I think we all do. So that's a huge part of what I pass on to my students. I have this wonderful story I love this to say about Sylvie Guillaume, who's just mm -hmm. such a beautiful dancer. Um, but she came to ballet theater and she, we were doing a stage call and everybody was waiting for the great Sylvie Guillaume to dance and we were doing Bayadere second act. Mm -hmm. And so she came out and she, she had this big Michelin pants on, sweatpants, it was quite cold. And she uh, was doing the arabesque turns and she kept falling over and the company was, you know, like, at, if it were me, I would have been so mortified. Right. <laughs> because at that time I was still, like if I didn't do a step well or if the performance wasn't good, you know, and she finally gave up and she went, Pff. and she came up to the front of the stage and she sat down and she went, tomorrow. <laughs> and I remember going, oh, yeah, if I how could, could she like do that? So the next day I said, you know what, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start doing that to myself and I'm going to see what happens. And it was so interesting because at that moment when I just, if I wasn't doing something well and I went tomorrow, my, all my cells relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to access more coordination and more strength because I wasn't blocking it with that sort of tension. And so I now, I tell my students, your cells hear everything you say to it, mm -hmm. them. And I felt it in my own body. And from then on, I was like, do mobile. I love that. And it love also that. helped me improve so, so much because I was more relaxed and more harmonious and coherent, you know. Um, and it took her to show me that. To see the full interview with Susan and I, please click the link in the card, you guys. We got into some really important topics for dancers, and I highly encourage you to watch it. It was just too long to include here. So click on the link in the card to see all of it. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, health and wellness for dancers is so, so important. You can't just stick on the shoes and go. It's a whole process. It's a whole lifestyle. And that's what this conference is about, and that's what this conference is bringing, hopefully, to the studio. So teachers, remember that. Don't just focus on the dancing. You have to focus on the health of your dancers. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like formats like this, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you missed my video on the 10 secrets to becoming a professional dancer, it's right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much, and I will see you next time.